Hi there. Let's take a look at chapter two, the mid-level assignment. And specifically, we're looking at step two, and we're looking at the second half of step two. So let me show those instructions on the screen. The instructions say use if functions to calculate the regular pay, that was the first video, and the overtime pay, which is this video, um, based on regu a regular 40-hour work week. And then it asks us to put those if functions in cell E5 and F5. Well, we've already done the if statement for E5. That was the first video. Now we're looking at creating the if function for overtime pay. That'll go in F5. So here's my spreadsheet. I'm going to click on F5. And let's write that if um, function together. And just as a reminder, an if function has three parts. The test what do you do if the test is true and then the third is what do you do if the test is false so the test true false okay let's get to writing this um, if statement so standard rules apply for any function type equals type the function name type the left hand parentheses and the first thing that goes into our if function is the test and in this case we our test is going to be hey did this employee work overtime and so we are going to take uh, D5, if D5 is greater than 40, and we'll notice that down here in B21, that's our standard, um, we call it base work hours for our organization, for the zoo, a person has to work 40 hours before they get paid overtime. And we're only calculating overtime pay. So our test is, did they work more than 40 hours? Now, B21 will not change. So I'm going to um, select, I'm going to highlight B21 with my mouse. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit F4. Then I'm going to click my mouse at the end again. And I'm going to type the comma. We need to separate out the three parts of the if statement by commas. Our test is done. The test is, did the person work overtime? Now we're going to say, um, what if it's true? What if that test is true? And in our case, let's just think about this in English for a minute. If that's true, then we want to calculate what to pay them for their overtime hours. So in this case, if we just look at this, you know, if I, if I was just looking at this, thinking it through in my mind, I would say, oh yeah, this employee worked eight hours of overtime. And so they should get eight, uh, they should get paid overtime wages for eight hours all right but now we have to sort of translate that and get it to fit into this excel um, language so what we're going to do is we're going to say first of all excel you have to calculate how many hours of overtime did they work and we're going to do a little math what we're going to do is say take hours worked minus uh, b21 and because we're doing that little bit of math i'm going to put this little piece because it's in its own little world, I'm going to put it in parentheses. You'll remember we call that order of precedence. So I'm going to say um, D5. So I did my left-hand parentheses, and then I'm going to say take D5 minus, sorry, I should have clicked on that, minus B21. Again, B21 will not change. So I'm going to make that an absolute reference. And then I'm going to sh um, finish up my parentheses there. So that's going to just figure out, well, how many hours of overtime? This person worked eight, but another employee worked 10, and another employee only worked four hours of overtime. So we're just mathematically figuring out how many over hours of overtime did they work. And then we're going to multiply that by, well, let's talk about this in English first. What do we pay them for overtime? We pay them one and a half times their hourly wage. And we can see that here. Here's the hourly wage in C5. We used that in our last if statement. And then down here in B22, it shows us this is our overtime rate. They get paid one and a half times their hourly wage. So we're going to say, um, take the overtime hours, in this case, this guy worked eight, or this person worked eight, times that by C5, times, which by the way is an asterisk, or you could say multiply it by B22. Now B22 will not change, so it needs to be an absolute reference. Just as a reminder, the others will change. C5 will change to C6 and then C7. As we autofill this down, we want C5 to change and we want D5 to change. So they stay as relative references. Only B21 and B22 change to absolute references. Okay, so this, we're saying here, um, hey Excel, this, let me move my mouse out of the way, this is the math that has to happen if the test is true. Type, I'm gonna click at the end of my um, line there, I'm gonna type a comma on the keyboard, 
Now we have to say, what do we do if it's false? Well, if it's false, they don't get paid overtime. If you take a look at um, who do we have there, Higginbotham only worked 35 hours. That person doesn't get paid overtime. So the answer is zero. If the test is false, then they get zero overtime pay. All right, and that's the third piece of our if statement. Put in your right-hand parentheses to finish that up. Let's hit the enter um, on the keyboard. I'm gonna press enter, and there's my answer, roughly 119 bucks. Now, on your, I've already done this once, so you can see all of my answers are filled in, but for you, you'll wanna hover over your autofill command tool and autofill that on down the line. Um, your formatting won't change. Mine is because I've already worked ahead, but you, you go ahead and do that on yours. And these are standard if functions, but you can see right there, complicated. Give it your best shot. Let, email me if you have any questions at all.